Good morning and thank you for joining me this morning for our daily devotion. We're starting a new series this morning entitled Listening to Jesus. And our first passage is where Jesus is talking about salt and light. So let's start off with the scripture. It's taken from Matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16 and it says this. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So what did I observe and how can I apply this to my life? Well, the first thing that struck me was the sharp contrast between the salt and the light. You see, light is all about visibility. If we live for Christ, we show others what God is like. We shine. In contrast, the salt, it works when it can't be seen. And it's the salt that really caught my attention when I was reading through the passage. So let me share two thoughts with you. My first is that salt is used in cooking. I don't use it very often, I've got to be honest, but in all of the cookery programmes that I watched over Christmas, salt was a seasoning that was used in pretty much every dish. Let me just read some of my notes so I don't miss anything out. You see, salt adds seasoning. It's intended to add flavour and to enhance taste. Likewise, we should add flavour and enhance those around us, adding something beneficial and of more value than was there in the first place. We should always leave a place better than we found it, just like salt does in a dish. It adds something special, it adds something better. But keep the balance. You see, too much salt is overwhelming and it ruins the meal. Too little and we don't notice a difference. So when we're speaking to others about God and we're sharing the word of the Lord, we don't want to be overwhelming. We don't want to ruin the meal, but we don't want to be reserved. We don't want to hold back and not give enough. You see, too little and no one will notice a difference. Too much and you'll put people off. If salt has no flavour at all, it is of no value. And that's an important message. Just like the light that was hidden had no value in darkness. If the salt is not used correctly, then it's got no value at all. And God wants us to be valuable, valuable in our environments, valuable in others' lives. So be the salt, enhance the flavour of others around us, others that we can influence, but get the balance right. My second thought was based on my walks to school recently. Now, gosh, they've been quite hazardous with all of this ice. The paths were icy, the roads were icy, um, and the school playground was incredibly icy. And I found myself every day wondering why nobody had come out, why the caretaker or the staff had not come out and salted the playground. You see, I know that salt melts the ice. And I thought that most people would think the same, but for some reason, every day when we went onto the schoolyard, the ground was icy and it was quite lethal. So that's another thing that I kept thinking, how salt can change an environment, a hardened, icy environment to an environment that was melted, that was safe. And so that's my second thought. You see, we need to use our God-given power and abilities to influence and enhance and change our surroundings, to change others around us. We need to change our environments for the better. When people around us might be a little bit icy, be the salt in action. Help melt the hardened hearts of unbelievers and share what Jesus has to say. So I believe that God is saying to me, be the salt, be the flavour that enhances the lives of others. And when you're needed, melt the ice, melt the hearts of the hardened. 
But as Jesus warns, don't lose your saltiness because then you're of no value to God. Don't add too much to spoil the flavour, but give just enough so the difference can be seen. Let us pray. Lord, help us to be the salt and the light in our lives. Help us to shine and show others what it's like to have God within. Lord, help us to be that flavour, to leave people better than we first met them, to enhance their lives, to melt that ice that maybe surrounds them and to give them hope especially at a time when things are so icy and so dark around us. Lord, let us make a difference. Let us be the salt and light. Let us be visible and let us be um, working when we can't be seen. Amen.